of uh, melting furnace is used in the foundry so last uh, lecture, uh, lecture one so discussing about the different types of furnace and uh, important furnace used in the foundry so first uh, you can study about the uh, important uh, point of uh, furnace so furnace uh, the name it is called as cupola furnace so cupola furnace it is used for melting only cast iron the position of the cupola is vertical and this type of furnace used the largest tonnage of the cast iron melted in cupola furnace three points are very important the first is the position of the cupola is vertical it is a cylindrical shape and uh, used for melting only the cast iron and third point is the uh, largest tonnage of the cast iron is melted in this uh, cupola furnace so the first important point cupola is a vertical cylindrical shaft type furnace vertical shaft type furnace it works on the counter current principle third point charge materials will be descending downwards and fuel gases will be ascending upwards which is very important and fourth point thereby exchange of heat between the rising gases and the descending charges uh, descending charge take place efficiently and fifth point coke lumps are used in the used as a fuel and sixth one limestone is used as a flux material so coke lumps or there is a solid fuel limestone and uh, metal that is a cast iron charge or uh, charge or charged into the cupola in the same sequence with the different ratio so you can see this figure clearly understand so this is a cupola furnace this is a position of the cupola is a vertical so this is a steel cell uh, the height of the steel cell uh, minimum 1040 to 35 feet uh, height this is a vertical height of the cupola so the important parts of cupola so there are two legs left and right you can see there the legs and two doors are there this is open uh, with the help of hinges these two doors open with the help of hinge hinge will be provided in this so this is door sub uh, the, the uh, door supported with the opar supporting this is a stand supporting of the door so next is so you can use the silica sand that is a base sand and ram it properly in an inclined manner why it is inclined so after uh, this uh, convert into solid to liquid state so liquid uh, metal is flowing easily taken from the uh, this one the exit easy to move that that is easy to flow that uh, that's why it is a inclined you can ram it here so next is a steel cell and inside that steel cell fire bricks are provided here you can see this one so this is a liquid metal after completing the process the whatever amount of uh, upper surface of the liquid metal it is called as a slag slag means it is the impurities of the liquid metal it is called as a slag before using this liquid metal you can remove that slag remove the slag that is the impurities so how it is remove that slag so slag hole is provided at the left side you can see this figure slag hole is provided at the left side so you can remove the slag um, or then before using that liquid metal so after that there are two years there are rectangular block is provided here there are two two years there are two wind box left and right side the wind box the main function of the two years and wind box to supply the high pressure air inside to the furnace this is the main function of the two year then this one and this one is a coke one layer and next is flux and metal that is a cast iron again same thing as a coke flux metal coke so these raw material or charge will be supplied to the cell this one furnace through the charging door charging door is provided at the vertical 
top of this one right side so charging door at the below that charging door the platform is there it is called a charging platform charging platform you can store the material and put into first is coke or flux material then metal this is one layer next again you can put into uh, coke flux material and this one is a cast iron then coke so these are the main important parts of cupola furnace first one is a charging door charging platform and cupola steel cell mild steel uh, with refractory bricks and this one is a metal so this one is a dark line it shows that the plugs and uh, this one is a uh, coke and uh, wind box two years this one is a whatever amount of uh, top surface of the liquid metal is called as a slag and liquid metal these are the important these are the two legs and hinges and silicon and base and you can use that it is inclined manner then what is a probe bar is there that is supporting to the door after completion the cycle the probe bar is removed these two doors are opened and any present left to the left inside that furnace you can remove that uh, and maintenance purpose you can easy to move that man inside that furnace then you can repair it and repair repair means there is a refractory bricks is damaged you can replace it so that's why the both side will be open and top uh, top side you can cover with a chimney this one so this portion empty portion it is got as a stack empty stack means there is a only the after process start ignition combustion take place inside this uh, chimney furnace the gases will go through the atmosphere through the chimney so this is about the uh, important parts of the cupola furnace so next you can go for second part in that so you can go for the five important zones in the furnace important so the first one is a well zone so well zone means you can see here well zone combustion zone reducing zone melting zone and preheating zone there are five important zones in the cupola furnace the first point you can take this is a well zone well means it is a uh, from sand bottom sand whatever sand will be present on the top of the door so here this point to uh, up to 2 year up to 2 years level up to our top most surface of the slag this area 2 years or top most surface of the slag it is called as well zone so combustion zone take place in the in between the 2 years and wind box up to here only wind box is provided so top most surface of the slag or top most bottom most portion of the 2 years in between it is called as a combustion zone so next is reducing zone central line of the wind box to the top most surface of the slag for plus material it is called as a reducing zone you can mark here clear so next is melting zone starts here so top most surface of the plus material to the next layer of the coke solid fuel you can put here it is called as melt the metal here this is a metal cast iron so the remaining portion it is called as a and this one is a preheating zone these are the five important zones preheating zone melting zone uh, reducing zone combustion zone and well zone so details three one by one what is the reaction how it is works inside that uh, cupola furnace so first one you can go for construction of the cupola cupola so the cupola consists of a cylindrical steel cell lined with a refractory material like a wire brick can clay second is uh, the height of the furnace uh, may be range from 20 to 35 feet 20 is a minimum maximum is 35 so you can uh, standard height of the cupola furnace uh, then uh, oh, diameter range from 10 to 15 inches 10 to 15 inches third point the furnace is open both side top as well as bottom side the furnace will open bottom side is closed with a bottom doors so top end will cover with a chimney okay so fourth point at the bottom of the furnace hinged insulated draw doors are forwarded so that after melting is completed the contacts left inside any cupola can be dropped down by opening the hinged doors the doors will be open any material present inside the cupola you can drop down and the second point is any maintenance or any repair inside that cell so easy to move a man and this is a repair and maintenance so next one is a uh, the coarse refractory sand and clay are rammed slightly on the bottom doors slightly on the bottom doors the sand is rammed 
tapered manner it is not a straight line the sand in a in a uh, rammed in a tapered manner easy to flow off molten metal easily uh, through the tapping spot and next one is a uh, next sixth point opposite opposite to the tapping spot and little higher is slag hole is provided so the main function of the slag hole to remove the slag uh, in the liquid metal through the uh, slag hole and next seventh point slightly above the slag hole the wind box and two ears the two ears are a small opening through which air under pressure is forced into the furnace the main function of the two ears a small opening through which under pressure is pressure is forced into the air is pressure uh, forced into the furnace from the wind box via pipe from the blowing equipment at the top of the shell charging door is provided the right side so provide through which the charge is feed into the furnace so next we can go for the important jewels uh, of propeller i already seen in, seen that in the figure so the first one is a well zone so the shape uh, the space between the bottom of the two ears and the sand bed inside the cylindrical cell is called it is called as a well zone as melting occurs the molten metal is gets collected in the in this portion that is a liquid metal storage tank that is a well zone so second one is a combustion zone the combustion zone of coppola is also called as oxidizing zone the combustion zone is also called as oxidizing zone so it is uh, located between the upper of the two ears and uh, uh, theoretical level above it the total higher of this zone is normally 15 cm to 30 cm the combustion actually take place in this zone by consuming the free oxygen com comparatively from the air blast and generating tremendous heat okay the heat generated in this zone sufficient enough to melt the requirement and other zones of the cupola the heat so range from 1550 centigrade to in this in this zone the heat the temperature range about 1550 centigrade to 1850 centigrade achieved in this zone few exothermic reaction take place in this zone so c plus o2 equal to carbon dioxide co2 plus heat silicon and oxygen c si plus o2 equal, equal to si o2 plus heat and manganese and oxygen so we'll get a 2 mno plus heat these are the exothermic reaction taking the uh, in the this combustion zone so third one is a reducing zone so reducing zone Coppola is also known as a protective zone which is located between the upper level of the combustion zone and the upper level of the coke bed. In this zone, carbon dioxide is changed to CO through an endothermic reaction. As a result of this temperature pulse, combustion zone temperature is about uh, uh, 1200 centigrade uh, at the top of this uh, zone. The important chemical reaction takes place in this zone. So carbon dioxide CO2 plus uh, coke is equal to 2CO plus heat. Nitrogen does not uh, participate in the chemical reaction occurring in this zone as it is uh, also the other main constitu constituent of the upward moving the hot gases. Because of the reducing atmosphere in this zone, the charge is uh, protected against uh, oxidation. And last but one, fourth one, this is called as a melting zone. So the lower layer of the melting zone, above lower layer of the coke bed is termed as a melting zone of cupola. So the reaction take place, uh, chemical reaction is given by 3Fe plus 2CO equal to Fe3C plus carbon dioxide CO2. And the last one, last but one, uh, preheating zone. Preheating zone starts from upper end of the melting zone and continues up to the bottom level of the charging door. This zone contains a number of alternate layers of coke, bed, plugs and metal charge. The main object of this zone is to preheat the charge from room. So temperature about in this preheating zone, so 1090 centigrade. Before entering to the melting metal zone, to the melting zone, the preheating take place in this zone due to the upward movement of the hot gases. During the preheating process, the metal charge in a solid form picks up the some sulfur content in this zone. And last one is a stack zone. 
you are always seen that in figure the empty portion of the cupola above preheating zone is called stack stack means the empty portion of the cupola above the preheating zone above the preheating zone it is called as stack it is provides the passage to hot gases uh, go to atmosphere atmosphere from the cupola furnace so the working principle of cupola furnace the working principle of cupola furnace the charge consisting of a metal alloying ingredients limestone and coal coke for fuel and carbon carbonization 8 to 16% of the metal charges is feed in alternating layers through an opening in the cylinder so next important point uh, air enters the bottom through two years extending a short distance into the interior of the cylinder the air inflow often contains enhanced oxygen level coke is consumed the hot exhaust gases rise up through the charge preheating it this increase the energy efficiency of the furnace the charges drops and is although air is feed into the furnace the environment is a reducing one so burning of coke under reducing the condition rises the carbon content of the metal next important point as the material is consumed addition charges can be added to the furnace a continuous flow of iron emerges from the bottom of the furnace this is about the working principle of cupola furnace so next point uh, depending on the size of the furnace of the flow rate can be high so nearly about uh, 100 tons per hour you can melt easy to melt a metal melts it is a refined some extent which remove continuous uh, constituents this makes this process more suitable uh, than electric furnace for uh, the charges a hole higher than the tap allows lag to be drawn off the exhaust gas is uh, emerging from the top of the uh, top of the cupola emission and control technology use, use that treat as emission to meet the environmental standards hinged doors at the bottom all allow the furnace to be empty and not in use next you can go for the type of uh, molten metal cupola is employed for melting the scrap metal over 90% of the pig iron used in the production of iron casting. Grey cast iron, modular cast iron, some malleable iron castings and some copper base alloys can be produced by cupola furnace. So heat energy sources. The cupola is a tubular furnace which produces cast iron by melting the scrap and alloy using the energy generated from the oxidation or combustion of coke coal and dirty so next the main important thing is uh, the advantages of uh, cupola so the main first important advantage of this cupola it is a simple and economical it is very simple it is not a complicated mechanism so we can it is a very simple as compared to other furnaces uh, cupolas can be repair, uh, repair the metal charge removing impurities out of the slag you can easy to remove the slag from the liquid metal in this cupola furnace the continuous uh, rather than the batch process uh, suitable the demands of uh, uh, repetition powdery so melting rate is high easy operation adequate temperature control chemical composition is controlled efficiency of the cupola is 30 to 50 percent less floor space required uh, as compared to other furnace uh, same capacity so next we'll go for the drawbacks or limitations of the cupola uh, since the molten air and coke are in contact with each other certain elements like the coke and iron the contact with each, with each other certain elements like uh, silicon and magnesium are lost and other like uh, sulfur are picked up this changes the final analysis of the molten metal close temperature control is difficult to maintain in this cupola so this is a discussing about the cupola so this uh, cupola working principle and uh, important uh, cupola zones and uh, figure and important parts advantages and disadvantages of cupola so this uh, conclude my session